Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Dragon is an incredible image editing tool that came out in May, and we've been waiting ever since the paper was released then for an official implementation to be released so we can tell if it really is as good as all the demo videos made it look. And today, fortunately, there are implementations both on Hugging Face and local implementations you can run with Gradio that uh, if you have you know, a relatively well-equipped GPU, you can run locally as long as you want. For those of you who don't know, Dragon is an image editing tool, but it approaches image editing in a really different way. So as opposed to existing tools like Photoshop or Inkscape, where the idea is you edit existing pixels, Dragon takes the approach that you should just modify, deform, and sort of translate an input image. Where in the past, you would have kind of brute forced a lot of changes what Dragon does that's different and pretty groundbreaking is it actually interprets what it thinks you want based on very narrow forms of input. So by narrow forms of input, I mean you're literally picking specific points you'd like to change and it thinks what it wants to do and with a number of degrees of freedom can do so. And I say number of degrees because when Dragon rotates an object or changes perspective or a number of different ways you could look at perspective, it's actually able to infer what might be a number of degrees in either direction. So it's not as if you have a 3D object you're generating from a 2D object, but it leverages some of the photogrammetry approaches we've seen prior to give you the best outcome when editing a 2D image. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Dragon actually stands for Drag-Based Generative Adversarial Networks. That's what a GAN is. It's a type of AI model that can generate realistic images based on your inputs. So it's unlike a lot of prior tools. And the biggest difference is how this model learns and gets better as you use it. So if any of you have used Midjourney before, you'll notice that over time, the model has gotten better at creating exactly what you want with fewer and fewer words. And certain words carry more of a weight than others because more people use them. And when you click on which image you like after you create a generation, every time you do that, the model is actually getting better. And if you watch our video where um, Imad from Stability AI was talking about the new Stable Diffusion XL model, he actually went into how easily 30% of the improvements or speedups in Stable Diffusion models comes from this kind of feedback, uh, but from uh, user interfaces they provide. Dragon does this in a really different way. So as opposed to Midjourney where you're looking at an entire image, Dragon looks at the specific points you decide to push, pull, and move around. And with every point you change, it looks at the image and understands what you might have wanted. So if you get to what you want in three moves, it understands what those moves might be. That could mean moving eyes around, making a smile, um, moving one person away from another person. Um, right now, I will say that the use cases for this producing the best results are kind of limited. So it's going to work best if you are if you have people, animals, cars, or landscapes. In that case, it just means it'll understand what it's looking at a little bit better. Faces is really what it's been trained on the most. Now, there's a specific term for this kind of learning process with GANs, and it's actually a big reason why GANs are so powerful and why GANs historically, even going back as far as 2018, were some of the first models that showed how powerful AI really could be. And you know, zero shot, just completely guessing what it thinks you want and then getting something that is very compelling to the user. So this process, you know, as these models learn and as these manipulations happen in an image, they're called a generative image manifold. And that's a portion of a GAN. And um, generally speaking, they produce realistic outputs even in challenging scenarios. And the big thing with GANs that made them popular originally was that they're able to understand how to avoid um, hallucinating occluded content or weird interactions where it might be hard for a model to understand where one object ends and another begins. So what can you do with Dragon today? So right now, um, the, the official implementation from uh, Jin Yang, a Chinese researcher, is on Hugging Face. And again, um, some people might say, oh, I've seen this on Hugging Face before, you know, for the last month or so. And it's important to note that those were unofficial implementations based on the information in the original paper that was published on May 19th at SIGGRAPH. And now you can see the official code is on GitHub. Uh, it's Dragon, it's by uh, Jin Yang Pan. And basically this is adding on to his findings in the original Dragon paper. The way you run this locally is with Gradio as you know, a lot of models leverage this kind of local UI. 
and it's pretty cool. I mean, generally speaking, you do have to have an NVIDIA GPU. You could use this with the M1 or M2 on Mac, but, uh, or, you know, technically it's possible with just CPU, but you're gonna need to be a bit more technical to make that happen. I'm gonna try that later tonight. I will say um, the model is pretty snappy with a 3090. So if you have a 3090 and Linux and you wanna try this out, the experience is actually quite good. And it reminds me of how awesome the early mid journey experience was. So using this, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's way faster than the original Hugging Face implementations. And yeah, if you don't have a GPU, go uh, to the link below and use the Hugging Face link. If you wanna run it locally, uh, definitely check out the link to the GitHub here. Now, I will say, you know, this model is great. It's easier to use. It's actually really intuitive for people to use who haven't done a lot of generative AI stuff before. However, there, there are some limitations. So the first one is that, um, you know, it's still under development. So the kinds of images you can use this on are still kind of limited. The input resolution is also still quite limited. And um, of course, there are other AI image generating or editing tools. But what I really like about this is it's zero shot in the fact that you give it one image you select some points, give it some prompts, and the model generally understands exactly what you want it to do. So in closing, you know, it poses the question, you know, what is kind of Adobe and Photoshop going to do to stay relevant? Obviously, they had this sort of beta generative fill feature going on for a while. And I think, you know, the, the best part of this project is it's getting all of these big companies to think very carefully about how they want to make products and how to keep up with AI stuff changing the game when it comes to editing images. I think the biggest reason that, you know, the generative fill feature was beta and, and limited in terms of how long it went on is right now it's really expensive to run these models. You should watch the video we put up today with um, a mods interview of Stability AI because he, he went into a, into a lot of detail as to, you know, their reasons for not having edge models that run, you know, stable diffusion in GGML just yet. And he said, you know, the idea is, you know, we want to get the models right. We want to understand why we're making these models and what they're good at. And then we'll work on optimizing them to actually run on edge devices. And I think Adobe's taking a really similar approach. They want to get the best model possible. And then when possible, you know, it's much more ideal, uh, even just from an economic standpoint, to have a model that can actually run on M1 or M2 Max, uh, or people who don't have a huge GPU attached to whatever machine they're using this on. Um, right now, you know, obviously the generative fill was possible, but the UI is a little iffy because obviously if you're using um, cloud GPUs, there's way more latency involved when you're working with images, um, not even video, um, still large images take a long time to go up to the cloud and back. And even if you have a, you know, fresh, freshly warm GPU doing all that work for you, it's not snappy. But if it's local, it's very snappy and, uh, you know, People used to say, oh, that'll never happen, but I tend to disagree because right now, I mean, some of the fastest coding models are actually running locally on M2 with less than two gigs of normal RAM, not even VRAM. This is really cool. Definitely check it out. It's really cool to see that the team delivered. Um, please go read um, the GitHub or read the full paper if you'd like. Those are all linked below. If you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe. And as always, I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.